The next topic we're going to cover is time value of money, probably the most important concept to know in finance because it underlies almost everything we do in valuation. It underlies what we do in bonds. It underlines how we make decisions on what projects to fund. So time value money is a core concept that we will use all the time. So I'll, I'll start with, the, again, basic questions to show that you kind of have the instincts even before you entered into HALT. First question, would you rather have $10,000 today or $10,000 10 years from now? I hope all of you said no, I'll take it now, right? If you said now, that means you have internalized the idea that money is worth more now than 10 years from now. Why? Well, we can spend it, we can invest it, we do all kinds of things with it. We had it now. If it's 10 years from now, we might even forget that it's coming, right? So that's, that's not a good scenario. Well, let's try another question. If you invested $100 in the bank today, and the interest rate paid by the bank is 10% per year, how much would it be worth in one year? Think about it. Ready, set, go. Well, I think you could do that too. 10% of 100 is $10. 100 plus $10 is 110. Okay, didn't need a master's degree for that. All right, let's try the next one. Question, same as above with the $100, but now let's wait two years. What's the answer there? Well, let's try, let's use Excel for this one because I want to show you something, all right? Okay, let's do the time value of money. And let's just put in some of the basic facts. We invest $100. And the time frame is, let's start with one year. And then the interest rate. And the interest rate is 10%. Okay. And I'll call it a percentage to get the symbol up. All right, so year one, year one. That's easy. It's the $100 plus $100 times 10%. Answer 110, right? Now the, the tricky part by year two is that I cannot do something like 100 times 10% times two plus $100. That's time 20. Well, why not? You're in 10 in year one, waiting another year gets you another 10, right? Wrong. Because that 110 at the end of year one will now be the new basis on which to earn interest for year two. That's what we call compounding. So I'm gonna get rid of this because it's wrong. So we're going to say, well, how much would you earn in year two? Well, to do it slowly, I would earn 10% times 110. So I'd earn 11, so the total would become that plus that, 121, which is the right answer, right? So that's it. Now, what if I did 10 years? Oh my God, that's a lot of work. So I'm going to give you another shortcut. It's actually a fundamental relationship for time value money. All right, I'm just gonna write it out in a in an algebraic equation, and then we'll go from there, all right? So let's do value at year two equals 100 times one plus 10% times one plus 10% again, all right? So this first 10%, got us from 100 to 110, and the second 10% got us from 110 to 121. So this is the expression. And I'll just show you that it works. 100 times uh, 1.1 times 1 1.1, right, 121. Okay, so that works. Now let's express it in a slightly different way so that we can generalize it. So we can say the value at year two equals 100 times one plus 10% raised to the power of two, all right? So what this, this expression here means is that however many years we're gonna multiply it by that factor over and over again until we hit the right number, right? In this case, twice, and that's the right answer. Now we can generalize. The future value equals the present value times 
one plus the interest rate raised to the power of time. Let's call it n for the number of years, right? So that is the general formula for any calculation. Here, 100 times 1.1 raised to the power of 2 gets us to our correct answer of 121. So this is what we did. We computed what it would be at one year, two years, generalize it to this expression, PB times 1 plus the interest rate raised to the power of time equals the future value. And now we can use it all the time. But we're not quite done with the squeezing out the value yet. Because our next value can simply be taking that future value expression, which is right here, just brought it forward, and solve it for PV instead of FV. So we take PV, leave it on the left sides, equals the FV divided by 1 plus the interest rate raised to the power of time. So now from one equation, we have two different expressions. One to tell us what is money worth in the future. That's the future value estimate, like the bank example. The other is the PV example. Was the present value of a certain amount of money that we get at a future point in time. So those are applications. So number one is if we deposit now, um, how much would I need to deposit so that I get to $10,000 in the future? See, that is a number where we're given the future value and we're determining the present value. So we would use the PV formula. So that example would be the present value would equal 10,000 divided by one plus whatever the interest rate for the, uh, the time period that was undertaken, right? And it's a similar thing to if someone offers me $10,000 in the future, what is it worth to me today? You might say, wait a minute, wasn't that how we started this whole discussion? The answer is yes. So you intuitively knew that 10,000 is worth more now than 10 years from now, but now you can quantify it. Now you say, well, okay, 10 years, $10,000, what is the interest rate? And if you gave me the interest rate, I can then change that number and tell you how much that $10,000 is worth to me today. So that's, that's an example of two formulas in TVM, future value and present value. Unfortunately, there's a lot more, but those are two of the fundamental ones.